Hello folks, i um, going to do another video today. i um, been asked off a friend on how I would actually paint up um, some Iron Warriors. So I have a Space Marine, I have some paints, and that's what I'm going to do today. Um, paints I'm planning on using, um, I've only coated it black, that's just normal GW black spray paint. I'm going to use Wall paints gun metal, probably a bit of white, a bit of demonic yellow, some leather brown, greedy gold, strong tone, and matte black. And then I might, just at the end, just for a bit of a try, try out some um, broken toads pigment. And um, that's rust. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is give it a good coat of some silver. Always remember to shake your paints up. I'm going to use a large brush for this. Just a base colour. It doesn't have to be too neat. Think about my um, painting technique, doing these. Um, most of it doesn't have to be too neat. A lot of it gets covered up when you do the, the later stages. Just try and keep it thin and nice and even. With the Iron Warriors, the in all metallic, I went for a black undercoat because um, I find the blacks work nicely. Oh, sorry, the metallics work nicely on the blacks. Takes most of the work out of it. So try to keep it nice and even. I'll probably cut a few bits out of this while I'm busy painting. I'm going to record the whole thing and then just cut the boring steps out. Well, not the boring steps, the, bo the boring bits where you just sit and watch me paint most of um, the model. Won't be doing the shoulder pads because they are going to be a um, different colour. Sadly, I don't actually have some Iron Warriors transfers, so I'll see what else I can find that looks Iron Warrior ish to um, stick on instead. I'm about to have something with a skull on somewhere. Either that, or I might just try and um, freehand it on. Doug, um, you don't have to do the freehand. I'm sure there'll be transfers around somewhere, so I'll I'll teach you how to do them. With the Iron Warriors, probably the hardest part of doing it, of, of the painting, is going to be the hazard striping, which I'm going to do on the um, sword blade. And the chainsaw blade on this model. So I'm just using a GW standard brush for this base coat. It's not in the best of conditions if you have a look at it. See if I can 
Get that into focus. There's a camera. There's a camera. Ah, it doesn't want to focus. Okay, that's a bit to cut out. You'll notice I am going to lay a few colours on before I put the wash over. to a smaller brush still on the camera going around the edges of the black with the um, gun metal that bit's just going to stay black So it's on the shoulder pad I'm going to do metallic. Chipping here and there. Yeah, and I've gone over that bit quite um, badly with the big brush, but I'll neaten that up later on. I hardly notice it once I get onto the more detailed areas. So you can use as much of this tutorial as you like. For doing your painting, you can miss some bits out if you want to. It's entirely up to you. It's just an old mini I had um, lying around. So that's the um, the gun metal on. Got a bit of gold now. and break up some of the colours. I'm going to go around the, um, the shoulder pad trims with the gold. You have to be a bit neater with this. You don't really want the gold going all over the place. As when anything painting anything for the first time, it's always good to um, experiment with how things look. If you don't get it right, you can always paint over the top of it again. When it does come right, then yay! bit of gold on the um, backpack there. I'll um, brush over that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Bit of gold on the chest I think. Put a bit of 
sort of over that gold bit there. Mm -hmm. So, gold trim. Bit of brown for the pouch. If you do find that you're having trouble getting the paint even, just add a bit of water. You're better off with a, a few smooth, thin coats than you are just one big thick coat. So now we're going so far. See the basic colours are on there. Now I am going to paint some hazard stripes on it now before I um, put a wash over it. For that I'm going to start off with a, a white bit, a white coat, doing the lines. Now you'll notice I'm not going to be too neat doing this because it will be neatened up once I um, go over it with black. That's a bit to cut out. So I'm going to do the ha hazard stripes now. First I'm going to paint them white. And then I'm going to paint over them with yellow and then give them a wash. This is probably going to be the most complicated part of this paint. To try and even them, even them up on both sides. You see, kind of trying to even both sides up there. Doesn't matter if they're a little bit out. I am going to chip over the top of them afterwards. I'm going to add a bit to chain axe. With it being a chain axe, I might actually add some um, blood effect over the top of it. Because the, um, the iron, iron warriors were a bit more the butchers than the um, Iron hands, or so the stories go. Over the top. Again, trying to Make them match at both sides. There you go, some hazard striping. That just needs to go yellow, so I'll leave it for a little while to dry. I'm going to get the yellow out. Give the yellow a good shake because I haven't used it for a while. Right, guys, so painted the white on. Next step is add some yellow to the um, hazard stripes. As all iron warriors have hazard stripes. It's the in thing for iron warriors. So we're just gonna paint the yellow on.
and we're gonna we're going to damage these up after we do everything else so little bits out of place don't make it that much difference as long as you get a nice smooth coat Easiest to think painting. So that you're in view of the camera. Just managed to get the hardest stripes basically on and once that's dry we'll give it a a good wash of ink to help pick up details add a bit of shading and all that sort of thing there we go so that's that done and once that's dry I will um, add a wash so we'll be back in a minute do some washing the yellow's now dry. Give you a quick view of how it looks so far. Bit of hazard striping here and there. Basic colours in. I'm now going to give it a wash. I'm going to use strong tone. Now it's more of a brownie colour scheme than the um, dark tone that I use for me. Iron hand. But I think this will work well. Just cover everything with it. Complete wash. Pick out more details after the wash is dried. And then change the base is metallic as well. I'm just going to give the whole base a, a wash as well. Just wash a bit. Of the, take a bit of the excess off where the um, the main armor plates are. And there we go. Now it's just a case of waiting for the wash to dry. For add more detail. Right, shall we be back once the wash is dried up? I'll give you a quick view so far with its wetness on there. As you can see the browns have gone into the um into the yellow, give it a warmer feeling to it. So we're we'll back shortly once that's dried. So there we go, the um, wash is dry. As you can see, that's perfectly good enough to use as a um, standalone model. Um, I'm going to add some extra details onto it though, and going to try out a weathering powder. So, next thing to do 
would be to add some chipping to the, the blade. For that I'm just going to use a bit of black. And just gonna get it in there. Just tap some bits over. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You're quite. It's all right if you don't. It's um, just extra details that you can add to models. Uh, shoulder pad. Now I was going to try and hunt out a transfer. I can't find anything that looks remotely like Iron, Han uh, Iron Warriors. So I'm just going to leave that. Um, you can see how to add, add a transfer in my other videos. Um, I am going to go into the eyes. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of a coating of white first around the eyes. Now I generally go for a um, glowy effect around eyes on my marines. So basically just rough area of the eye. Go with a bit of white. And I'm going to add some yellow to it. Doing the eyes yellow because it matches up with the yellow that's on them already. I don't like using too many colours on the models. The more colours you have, the messier the look. Keep it simple and it works. I know not dry, what I'm going to do is mix a bit of white in with the yellow to do the highlights on it. Work round the edges. And a bit more white. <coughs> Now once it's fully dry I'm going to add a bit more inside where the eye lens goes. Okay, that's it for now, I'll be back in a minute. So the yellow has dried a little bit on the eyes, I'm now looking at it thinking I don't really like it so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a bit of the um, strong tone to it the strong tone out just lightly I'm going to brush it over hopefully this will dull it down a little bit more it'll also add a bit of definition to the eye lenses yeah I'm liking that bit better
Yeah, I prefer that. There we go. Let me have a look. So we've got the mucked up blades with the damage on it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a bit of weathering powder to the bottom of the legs and the base. And then I'm going to show you how to add a little bit of blood and gore to the weapons. Back in a minute once that's dried. All right, so weathering powder, I'm going to try some of this um, You Broken Toad pigment. What I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to brush a little bit on. Just around the bottom of the legs on this one. The iron hands have been going all over the model, but keep things simple with this one. I'm just going to do it around the bottom. Just add that little bit of shade into it. There we go. And the next thing is a little bit of blood. So for the blood, I'm going to use a new paint. Um, it's one that I normally use for when I'm doing blood. It is Tammy is clear red. It does actually just look like a pot full of blood. So what I'm going to do, using an old brush, I'm just going to stipple this to the um, the weapons. Using an old brush because that means that it doesn't really go where I want it to go, it just looks kind of haphazard. goes in the basic area but it doesn't actually go on neatly. Nope, down there. Just a bit more blood. There we go. And now what you do with that is if you add a little bit of black or brown ink to it and stipple on again. It does look like there's a bit more definition to it. And it's kind of builds up and looks like chunky bits of torn up flesh and what have you. And there we go. That is how I would paint an iron warrior. There you go. So, Doug. Hopefully this has helped you. Um, this model, I'll have it sitting waiting for you. Next time I see you, you can take that with you and um, give you a bit of practice for painting up. Hope you found this helpful. I hope everybody else has enjoyed watching it. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for now. Bye bye.